So far, we have looked at algebraic varieties with rational maps as morphisms. In this setting, where we have replaced regular morphisms with rational maps, we want to see some relationship, some, some equivalence relation that generalizes isomorphism in this setting. And so the idea is we want to get a notion of an invertible rational map. Now, of course, since we're doing everything on dense open subsets, we will require this to be defined on a dense open subset. So we require invertibility on a dense open subset. The way to do this is first to observe that if you have a dominant rational map from x to y, and a rational map back from y to x, then because of the dominance of f, g composed with f is going to be defined on a dense open subset, so it's a rational map from x to x. Using this knowledge, we define a map uh, from x to y of algebraic varieties to be birational if it is a dominant rational map and if there is a dominant rational map back so that composing them in either order gives us the identity. But when I say gives us the identity, I mean it equals the identity where the equalities here are equalities of rational maps. So equalities on dense open subsets. I could have skipped the word dominant in the uh, definition, but then I have to take care so that I formulate this in a well-defined way because without the requirement of dominant, I cannot just state this straight away because maybe the composition is not a rational map. But in any case, for even if you do it in that way, a birational map is necessarily dominant, so you don't lose anything by requiring dominance from the beginning. So when you have a birational map between x and y, you uh, call x and y birationally equivalent. There is an alternative way to phrase uh, this property. Namely, the following statements are equivalent for irreducible varieties x and y. First is x and y are birationally equivalent, so there is a birational map between them. Second, there exist non-empty open subsets u in x and v in y that are isomorphic. Well, why is that? So two, why are these two properties equivalent? Two implies one. This is because if you have an isomorphism from u to v, and v is included in y, uh, and also a g from v, or rather f inverse from v to u included in x, then by definition f is a rational map from x to y and it is going to be birational because it is dominant since its image is this v and f inverse the same and composing them gives you the identity on dense open subsets. You're working with irreducible varieties so therefore open non-empty open uh, subsets are dense. And for 1 implies 2, now we have g from x, a rational map, to y, and h from y to x, so that they compose with the identity. So then you take, then you take as u, so I will say w g uh, intersect with the pre-image of w h where w g is where the open set where g is defined and w h is the uh, set where h is defined 
and likewise you take as your v w h intersect with h inverse of w g then you get uh, from your maps g and h restricting them to these sets an isomorphism from u to v so these two conditions are equivalent and both these conditions are equivalent to the statement that uh, x and y have the same field of rational functions so why is that well two implies three because k of x is isomorphic to k of u because u is dense in x we have seen this and because u and v are isomorphic even k of u is going to be isomorphic to k of v because uh, the construction of k is functorial as we have seen and because v is dense in y this is just k of y in the reverse direction this isomorphism k x to k y is induced by a map uh, a birational map necessarily f from x to y with inverse in the sense of birational maps g from uh, y to x and so in other words f is a map from some say u0 to y and g is a map from some v0 to x and then if you take as u the inverse image of uh, v0 inside x and as v the inverse image of u0 inside y then these two f and g will give you an isomorphism between u and v and these will be then solved in subsets of your varieties and a special case of birationality the nicest case so to speak is birationality or birational equivalence to affine space so an algebraic variety that is birationally equivalent to affine space is called rational note that this is quite far from being isomorphic to affine space for example by uh, forgetting about infinity projective space is rational projective space is birationally equivalent uh, to affine space and one can show that every quadratic hypersurface in pn is birationally equivalent to pn minus 1 and therefore it is going to be rational in other words for better or for worse birational uh, maps give you more freedom in considering algebraic varieties as similar and we will use this in the future to deal with singularities.